If God wants us to serve Him and believe in Him and love Him, then show yourself. Let us see you. So why doesn't He let us see Him? Because it's a strange thing that if you see something and you like it, you're satisfied. You don't go any further. By not letting us see him, God is saying, I want you to know me, and I want you to understand me. I don't want you to just see me. And because we don't see him, we have a deeper and better relationship with him than if we did see him. What, what does God want us to know about him? What do you want people to know about you? You want people to know the real you. What is the real you? What are you really? The real you is that which you really need. That's the real you. If you don't understand what I need, then you don't know me. Sometimes people understand you better than you understand yourself. Why? Because they know what you really need. And what you really need, that's the real you. So what, is, what does God want? He wants us to know him really. Which means, do you know what he really wants? Of course, he wants you to do Torah mitzvahs, he wants you to be from, he wants you to be good. What does he really want? What is his need? If we know that, then we know him. If we saw him, we wouldn't bother finding out what he needs because we would be happy just seeing him. That's basically what Tznius means. Tznius means I don't want to be seen, I want to be known. I want to be understood. Or in different words, I don't want to be loved, I want to be needed. I want to be necessary not cute. That's the idea of tznius. So tznius means get to know the real me or I'm not interested at all. So God practices what he preaches. He doesn't let us see him because he is tznius. So what does this tell us? There are very from people. There have always been very from people who are very orthodox, very observant. They keep all the mitzvahs. They do everything right. But they don't have any idea of what the Ebershter needs. They think that we're supposed to do mitzvahs so that we will get a reward. That God is just nice. He loves us. And he gives us a way that we can get to heaven and we can have Gan Eden and we can become a tzaddik or a benani or whatever. So he's just being nice to us by giving us the mitzvahs. And if you do the mitzvahs, it'll be good for you. And if you don't do the mitzvahs, then it's not going to be so good for you. And what does God need? I don't know. Who says he needs anything? That's the way a religious person thinks. The Baal Shem Tov came along and said, this is not good. This is not good. If you're not getting to know and understand what God needs, then you're missing the whole point. So what, is, what does it mean when the Mishnah says, don't do mitzvahs for the reward. Really? 
then why am I doing them? If I'm not getting what I need from the mitzvah, and, and God doesn't need the mitzvah, so I don't need it, and he doesn't need it, so why am I doing it? So how can you do a mitzvah without thought of a reward? The only way it makes sense that you should do a mitzvah without thinking of a reward is because he's getting something from it. So you're doing it for him. That makes sense. But if he doesn't need it, and you don't need it, so what is it? So what does it mean that God needs? Very simply, we know that in the beginning there was only God. There was nothing else. Then, he created the world. So what does that mean? It means that he was not satisfied. He was not content to be alone. So he created the world in order to get something. Obviously. Whatever that is, that's what we want to know. What was bothering him? What did he want? What is he trying to get? What does he need from his creation? If you understand that, then you have gotten closer to him. If you don't understand that, if you don't know that, if you don't care about that, then your relationship with him is not what it should be even if you love him, and even if he loves you. So love is really not enough. When you know what he wants, and you love what he wants, because it's important to him, that's real love. Does this make sense? If somebody loves you for no reason, that's nice. It's not real. But if somebody knows what is important to you, and because it's important to you, it becomes important to them, that's real love. I'll give you an example. A person goes out on Mitzvah. You go and you give a woman Shabbos candles. And she says to you, why are you doing this? You can have one of two answers. You can say, and maybe you already did say this, you could say, the Lubavitcher Rebbe said that this is very important and he asked us to do it, so that's why I'm doing it. I'm doing it for the Rebbe. Because the Rebbe said that it's important. Or you can say, every Jew has to do mitzvahs, and every Jew is responsible for every other Jew. So, I'm offering you this mitzvah. What is the difference between these two answers? In the first answer, you're saying, this is important to the Rebbe, so I'm doing it for him. Is it important to me? Maybe not. So if the Rebbe didn't ask me to do this, I, I wouldn't be doing this. In the second answer, the Rebbe said that every Jew has to do a mitzvah and that every Jew is responsible for every other Jew. And I agree with that. I feel that now. So now, I'm not doing it because the Rebbe likes it. I like the same thing the Rebbe likes. Of course, he taught me. But now, I feel what he feels. I feel the importance of every other Jew and of every mitzvah. That's why I'm doing the mitzvah. That's the difference between being a chosidl or being a chosid. A chosidl likes to do what the Rebbe says, to make the Rebbe happy. A chosid is happy from the same things that make the Rebbe happy. And the same is true with mitzvahs. 
you can do a mitzvah because if Debishter wants, fine. Or you can do the mitzvah because if it's that important to him, then I love it too. That's real love. If somebody is important to you, and that's why everything they like and everything they want, you also love, that's real love. Make sense? Why does a mother love everything about their child? I love the way you talk, and I love the way you look, and I love the way you smile, and I love the way... Why? Because you're my child, so you're important to me. If you're important to me, then I love everything about you. If you're not important to me, then some things about you are cute, and some things are not. So I love the way you smile, I don't like how you talk. I love the way you talk, but I don't like how you smile. But if you're important to me, then I love everything. It's like they, God says, the Navi says, Al tigu bimshichai. Don't touch my people. Not a lot of touch. Not a little bit of exaggeration. <laughs> don't touch. You say don't hurt. But don't even touch. What does that show? If something is so important to you, then even a touch becomes important. Even how you touch my child becomes important. Like, for example, how precious is your eye? The apple of your eye. You know the expression? We are the apple of God's eye. You know what it is about the eye? You don't have to hit the eye to hurt it. If you touch it, it hurts. So God says... The Yidden are so precious to me, like the apple of my eye, so don't even touch it. That's real love. So what does it mean, do a mitzvah without thinking of a reward? If God is important to you, then his mitzvah is what you love. What are you going to get from it? You don't have to get anything from it. What do you get from loving your children? Nothing. You love them, and that's it. That's good enough. Do you love them so that they'll take care of you when you get old? <laughs> no. Loving them is just the natural thing, because they're so important to you. 